So uh, the test is going to be due next Thursday um, since we won't have class. So that gives you time to work on that um, and a little extra, a few more extra days. Um, so there's that. Um, today we are talking about where I know I opened it. There it is. So chapter eight, there's a couple of ideas in this. Um, the uh, obviously the first thing is the uh, um, uh, the z intervals and t intervals, the, the uh, confidence intervals. Um, the other thing is the t test, uh, which is um, the fact that we can we don't have to have the population standard deviation. So um, what happens in that is it's mostly normal. It's just that there's a little bit more spread in it. So they talk about those degrees of freedom, um, which basically just gives you a little bigger um, area to work with. So there's a little more error involved. And as the number, as the sample size gets bigger, the um, degrees of freedom get larger, obviously, and the graph turns more into uh, the normal curve. So eventually it becomes the normal curve uh, when the sample size gets sufficiently large. And um, when I was first doing statistics, because it, we were doing it with tables, after you got to 30, we went and said, okay, well, that's not sufficiently large. Uh, now, because we're using computers, um, we just always use the uh, T interval and uh, the degrees of freedom, no matter what. And and so if we don't know the population standard deviation, so it has to be with means, and if I don't know the population standard deviation, then we're going to use the t-intervals and the t-statistic, which we'll get to next week. Um, the t-tests. And if we were to actually go to distributions, there's t-distributions right here as well. We can get those values, um, and we can look those up. We don't have to because we're going to be using the t-test to do this, but it's one of the distributions that exists, and it's based on it's called the student t-distribution. Um, they didn't use s obviously because of a standard deviation, and um, it's called the student t-distribution uh, because the person who uh, invented it was a student of statistics, so um, he called it student. He didn't want his name applied to it because he was working for Guinness and didn't want people to know. So that's kind of how the history of that comes. Um, and what we're going to look at is we're going to look at a lot of these things in the confidence interval just gives us the ability to say we believe that the population standard deviation is going to be in this range. So we're going to find a samples, sample means or sample portions. And we're going to get some values, and we're going to calculate those values. And we're going to say that we believe the mean is in this space here. And when we say we're 90% confident, that means 90% of the time, if we did this over and over again, we would be right 90% of the time. There's going to be answers that are not correct. And that's all it is because of sampling. You know. Um, and thus, thus, we can't be positive. We're never 100% positive. We can get 99. We can get 99.7, 99.99. We can keep getting closer and closer. But we'll never get to 100% uh, certainty because you know there's always going to be error. Unless we have the population, we don't know. OK? So that's the idea about this. And we're going to see this again next week when we do um, on Thursday when we do hypothesis testing because it's kind of the check. Um, we look and say, well, is the mean in that range? If the mean is in that range, then we reject the null hypothesis. If it isn't, then we, uh, sorry, if the mean is outside of that range, we reject the null hypothesis. If it's in, then we don't reject the null hypothesis. Seems pretty simple. And you'll see what I'm talking about next week when we actually look at that. But Okay, 
So to do these, we're going to use the stat tool and we're going to go to tests. And we are going to come down here to seven, eight, and A for this week. Eventually we'll look at two samples, which is in chapter 10, which would then we would look at two sample Z tests, two sample T tests, and two sample abortion tests, uh, as well as uh, intervals, as well as two sample Z, two sample T, and two sample proportion. But for right now, we're only looking at one sample, and we're using that to kind of guess where the population is. And what's going to happen is it's going to give us a range. So we're going to get two numbers, a lower bound and an upper bound. And we're saying that we believe that it's in that range somewhere. We don't know exactly where, but we believe that it's, you know, to some certainty that it's in that range. And if they don't tell us um, how certain we want to be, we usually go with 95%. Um, and you'll see, I think almost all of these questions talk about 95%. So it uh, makes life easy. I mean, they will have, I think it's a couple that have like 90 and one has 80, just, just so you can see different things. But usually on, in general, we use the 99%. And what we're going to do is they're going to ask us to take this information and kind of put it into um, a list. So we can say, okay, well, these are the numbers we need. This is the reason we're doing it. You know, do we have an X bar? You know, do we have the sample mean? Do we have the population standard deviation? Do we have the sample size? And once we hit, because we need all of those things to do these tests. So if we have the population standard deviation, we use it. If we don't, then we have to use the, the sample standard deviation for means. Um, there are proportions that we'll also do, um, and those obviously don't have standard deviations, but people tend to hit the wrong button and then freak out trying to figure out well, what they how do we do this remember if it's a proportion you use the proportion one if it's a mean you use the uh, z and the um the samples the z interval and t interval if it's a proportion you use the one proportion so that's the big thing to make sure you remember so Looking at you know, question one, we have 175 people. That's obviously my N. They're not, not necessarily going to give them an, the sample mean. They're going to tell you what it is, 22.7. And we know the population standard deviation. So because we know that, we, use, we have sigma. So we're just filling in the information because we're going to need it for later on. And then they ask us, well, what do X and X bar mean? Remember, X is um, the variable that each individual thing can change, whereas X bar is the means of the samples. So um, we want to make sure you have both of those in this because they ask for both of them. So the X is a single item in our sample of 175, whereas X bar is the mean sample mean from those 175 people and we can do this again and again and again we're going to get different numbers because we're going to have different you know people giving us different information about how long their taxes take um which distribution are we going to use because it is known that the standard population standard deviation is known it's a normal distribution because remember means the averages over and over and over again are normally distributed so because it's a normal distribution we want to use n um, we're not going to have any of these others on here so uh, if you see the drop down menu obviously we're not having a uniform or exponential or hyper um, geometric or a binomial so um, it's going to be a normal distribution um, if it's a t distribution you'll see how that looks differently and then we have to put in the mean again, the sample mean, and then the um, standard deviation is again, we're going to take our value here and divide it by the square root of n. Because this is a 
mean and we have the standard deviation of the means, we have to divide that. So 6.6 .6 divided by the square root of 175. And I get this number here and they want two decimal places. So we make sure we round. And remember if you don't round it, you just put the whole thing in. It's okay with that. See, it's fine with that. So if you're like, I, I don't want to round, I'm horrible at rounding, just put the whole thing in. Um, why did we choose this? Well, we chose the normal distribution because we know the population standard deviation. We would use the t distribution because we only knew the sample standard deviation and its mean. So those are the things we have to look at. Um, and here they talk about is, is uh, the sample mean is smaller than 30. No, that that has no. It, the sample mean could be anything. Um, it's whether we know the population standard deviation or not. Hi, Michelle. I have some good news. I moved the test to next Thursday. Um, it's in the video, but um, I figured I would let you know ahead of time. So, yay. Thank you. You're welcome. Since I figured you guys aren't going to be here next Thursday, this gives you something to do for two hours. And you don't have to rush on Saturday, on Sunday. So um, I figured that would that works out. Um, the uh, confidence intervals, when they, they're going to use this same piece of information over and over again, um, to get it, it's really fairly simple. We On the calculator, we don't, we don't have to do any math whatsoever. There is, you just make sure to make sure you put in the right information. So we're going to go to stat and tests. And because this was a normal distribution, because we knew the population standard deviation, we're using the Z interval. If we didn't, we would use the T interval. So Z interval. We have data. Oh, sorry, we don't have data, we have stats. So if stats isn't blinking, you have to make sure you move from data to stats. Data means we actually have a list of numbers. So, um, and there's a problem in there. I'll show you how to do that one. Um, so we, we have statistics, information. We have that the standard deviation is this. So don't use the number that they put in here. It'll calculate that for us. The population standard deviation is what we're looking at. So we're going back to the original thing, the 6.6. .6. What is our mean? What is our sample size? What is the confidence level? In this case, they want 90%. So they'll tell you what, what confidence level they want. So confidence level, confidence interval, same thing. turn off and I wasn't selecting that so that's probably why all those things didn't work. Point nine zero. And then when you calculate it just gives you the answer and just spits out these numbers. So it will do it in a blink of an eye. All right. So those numbers here are the confidence level. That's what they're asking for. That's what that's going to go right in here and right down here in these two values as well. Because what it's saying is we're going to draw you know, a normal distribution and we have these two boundaries that we believe the actual population mean is between those two numbers. That's what's going on in those spaces. In this stuff here, this confidence level is just the confidence level. So 90%, just turn it into a decimal. And then this here, these two sides over here are just going to be whatever's left from 100% divided by 2 because it's alpha over 2. Alpha is error. And so we have, because we're 90% confident, we have a 10% error. We have a 10% chance of being wrong. And so we then have to, it could be lower 
or it could be higher. And it's a 50% chance, 50-50 chance that it's on either of those. So half of the error is on one side and half of the error is on the other side. Again, because this is normal, that's, you know, they're going to be evenly distributed on either side. So we just take that, whatever's left, and divide it by 2. And then the last thing here, calculating the error bound, well, we can take these two numbers that we have. And subtract them. That's our total error that we've added. And then we divide that by two. Because what happens is we get this error that we calculate and we subtract it from the mean to get this space, this number, and we add it to the mean to get this space. So if you look, our mean was 22.7. Well, 22.7 minus 0.82, no, they've been the right numbers, 22.7 minus 0.82, we get 2188, which is our lower bound. 22.7 plus 0.82, we get 2352, which is our upper bound. So the boundaries are made by taking this error that we calculate, and there's a formula for it, but you don't have to worry about it, and they're not going to ask you to calculate it. Um, we take that this error that we use to calculate, we add it to the mean and subtract it to the mean, get our space that's on either side of it, and say now, now we're this percent sure that the mean is in this range. Okay, that means 90%, in this case 90%, 90% of the time, if we did this over and over again, we're going to get different ranges but the mean should be in those. If we did 100 times, we should get 10 times where the answer is not in that range. Okay, and so what we could end up doing is we could, you know, keep doing it, try to get the, you know, the smallest number where the, the, the smallest and the smallest on either side and go, okay, well, here's where our, our ranges are. Here's where our pieces are. This should be in this space, you know, because 90, 90 of the 100 of them have this range it's probably and that would be more accurate but we just do it once because you know it takes a lot of time to survey 175 people you know and find all of this information so we don't do that we just do it the one time and say we believe that it's in this range and we're done and we can be wrong that that's the beauty of statistics is that you can do all the work and still be wrong, and it's okay. <laughs> um, uh, that's the idea of it. And then, then here they're asking about what we do with confidence levels. So if we want to increase our level of confidence, which means this thing, we want to increase this 90%, but we want, and we want to keep the error bound, which means we want to keep this number, what are the things we have to do? Well, there's three things we can change. We can't change the mean. We, we can't change the population standard. Those, those things we can't do. We can change this. We can actually come up with a value for this and say we want to be in this range. Or we can change the number of people we survey. Those are the three things we have control over as we're doing confidence levels. You know, I can you know, come up with a, an error bound that I want to have. I want to be within one hour, give or take, or a half hour, give or take. So if I want to do that, if I want to increase or decrease the error bound, but I want to keep this the same, then I have to change my survey size. If I want to keep my survey size the same, and I want to be more confident, then my error is going to change. Now it's going to get bigger. Right. If I want to, um, you know, change, you know, if I would change this and I want to leave, you know, this and this alone, you know, this is going like I like I if I change one thing, other something has to change. So um, I have to change. I can change two. I can change all three of them, um, but usually two of them are the things you're going to change, and then the third one would get affected, uh, one way or the other. Um, and so that's what they're asking, you know, what is going to happen? So 
we're either going to have to increase if we want to be more confident and this is going to stay the same we have to in interview more people if we wish to um, keep the error bound and survey fewer people well we're going to have less confidence because we have fewer people like if we have fewer people something has to change one of these other two things has to change if we're keeping this the same this one's going to change and this here is changed in the same degree as this does if it goes up if the number of people goes up the confidence interval will go up if we leave the error bound alone if this goes down our confidence goes down if we leave this alone if we change this and this then this is going to go in a certain direction could go in either direction so we're just depending upon what we have but usually when we have more people that we're surveying if we our confidence is going to get better just because we're surveying more people but if we shrink this down too much this may go down so they have effects on each other and that's all they want you to think about and you could actually change this and, and figure out well gee how could i um, if I had 48 people and this comes out to be the same number, just by doing the same problem, I have my Z interval. I'm going to change this from 175 to 49. I can see my range got bigger. Okay, I can see my numbers spread out more. Okay, this number got lower. This number got higher, not by a lot, but we can see that they got bigger. So if I wanted to keep this the same, my confidence level would have to go down. And so if I make this you know, 0.80, well, now notice, I mean, it's close, it's still bigger. I'd have to go down even further. I'll go down to 0.70. Now I can see it's getting closer to these numbers here. So it's we're by shrinking our our, our survey from 175 to 50, we really reduced our um, confidence to keep the same error. We have, we're at 50% confidence level, so it, it or less. So it's really gone way down. So those are things you can play with to, to see how they work. And I think this next question has the same things here so um or no this one asks about um why are they different okay so in this one here this is also going to be a z-test because we know the population standard deviation it asks us if what the sample standard deviation is but because we know sigma we don't use it it's weird that they don't ask us about the end but whatever um but the same thing is going to be uh, going in there. We're going to have our N, which is our sample size. We're going to have our weight, our average weight. And while we have this as a sample standard deviation, we don't care because we know the population standard deviation is 0.1. So we're going to use a Z test. And all the same things are going to happen. We take this number here to get this. It's the 0.1 divided by the square root of n, which so in my case, I have 0.1 divided by the square root of 18. And that's where they get this number from. These things are going to be exactly the same. We're just doing a confidence level. So in this case, it's a 90%. In this case, it's a 98%. So we can see that here our range is for 1.96 to 2.03 and here we have 1.945 to 2.055 so notice they're larger because we're more confident the more confident we are the bigger the range we have to put our our values in because we didn't change anything else we didn't change the sample size um, at all so we can't because we didn't change our sample size and we made this bigger this has to get bigger. So it goes from 0.039 to 0.055. So it that's what increased. 
So as we, if we keep our sample size the same, we increase our confidence, our error has to get bigger because we have to have more values that we can put in and say, well, I think it's between here now. So now I'm more confident. I could be 100% confident and say it's somewhere between zero and a million. <laughs> that doesn't help me. You know, it's not, you know, I use those aren't useful values because I, you know, ounces. I mean, it, I'm confident that it's in there, but I have this giant range that I can't do anything with. So, um, you know, that's the problem. We are, we're never po exactly positive from our samples. Um, but we're pretty sure that, you know, we go somewhere from a completely empty bag, bag to, you know, five pounds of candy, you know, when we're doing this, you know, each bag is the average is going to be that, you know, it, it's true. I'm 100% confident. It's not a good estimate, but I'm confident. And so that's, you know, we're, we keep stretching out our confidence levels. And yes, we can technically get negative answers in this. So if I were to do this. Um, well, probably not this one, but I had a Z interval. I have stats. And so remember, if we go from data, data to stats, we just click the left and right arrows and hit enter, and it puts that information at asks us where our data is in list one and list two. But I have stats. My sample standard deviation is 0.1. My mean is 2. Sample size is 18, and I want to be 0.99997. I calculate, and notice it didn't happen. But if I were to make you a much smaller sample size of, say, 3, and if this standard deviation was, you know, you know, point four I'll make it whoop, I hit the wrong button one and I calculate how does it get a negative number I mean so technically you can get negative numbers in in real life situations they don't mean anything <laughs> like I obviously can't have negative weight but my confidence level could give me that depending upon like on the data that I, I picked. So um, it is possible. It's not likely, but it is possible to have. And so that's what they just want you to answer, you know, do again the same confidence levels. And then what does it mean? Why are they different? Well, one is bigger than the other. And then, um, what does the interval F interval mean? So F was this one. So we are 98% confident that the population mean is between these two numbers. Yep, see, that's all that's, and that's all it means is that we are, are given whatever the confidence level is, are that sure that the population mean is between the values given. And this is just that question there, so I'm not going to bother answering it because it's the same thing. Uh, this one here, this is one where we have data. And so usually when we have data, we're going to do a t-test because we don't use, and in most real life situations, we're going to do a t-interval anyway because we don't know the population innovation. I mean, it's just unusual. Like they just want you to get used to it first to know, okay, well, we just did the Z tests and Z, um, the normal distributions. So we're going to use it again is really how that kind of worked. So to get all of our information, all this stuff here, you know, stat, edit, I'm going to put in my data. So list one and clear and enter. Don't hit delete, hit clear. All right, I put my numbers in. Sorry, um, after you went to stats, where did you go? Stat, I'm going to, uh, it, because I'm putting data in, I want to go with edit. Okay. Because that allows me to edit data that's in my lists. Okay, got so, it. I'm, I'm and there. if I want to clear my list, I go, if I have stuff in here, I title list, hit clear, 
Enter. Okay. And it clears out the call. And you go up to the title and do what? Oh, push clear. Hit the clear button. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. It's weird. My um, when I logged in, to, yes, I realize I don't have camera going. When I turned it on, it said, "Oh, look, is this you? Your camera's fine." And now, when I said, "Yeah," then when I went to go turn it on, click here, it said it didn't work. I I don't understand. <laughs> like, it makes no zero sense. Two point two, two point eight, one. So I have my data. I have nine things, which is good because this is number 10. I have nine things. Perfect. So there's nine of them. So to get my mean, my standard deviation, my sample size, this stuff, I'm just going to go to stat and calc and one variable statistics. And I have things in list one and calculate. And so it gives me my mean. And it gives me my sample standard deviation. This is the one I care about, the S of X. Okay. And they only want two decimal places, so 3.1. So 0.31, because it's a two, so we round down. Now, N is the sample size. The reason we have N minus one is because that's for degrees of freedom. And when we have degrees of freedom, it comes from the idea that when we choose stuff, If I had five people running a race, for first place, I have five choices. Right? I could put any of these in first place. So which one do you want to go first? A, B, C, D, or E. And I'll pick E. That means that one's gone. In second place, I now have four choices. I'll put C. In third place, I now have three choices. I'm going to put A. In fourth place, I'm going to put, I have two play choices. I have D. But in last place, I don't have any choices. This person has to be last. There's one less thing to choose from when I am making a list. Okay, there's n minus one options of choosing things when I put stuff in order. Because once I've picked this thing, the last thing has to be last. I have no options left. So I had four choices I could make. I have four degrees of freedom in a group of five things. And that's where the idea comes from, is when we have degrees of freedom, it's how many things can we make choices for? And so in this case here, we have nine things. We have eight degrees of freedom. We have one less than how many it is. And we're going to see um, pretty much in most cases that it's just going to degrees of freedom is going to be n minus one. There's a few things that are going to be different. Like next week when we do hypothesis testing, uh, in chapter 10, we do hypothesis testing, we do two samples. There's a formula for it. And so we get decimals and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, the idea is the same, but because of standard deviations and squares and, and sample sizes, and there's all this big ugly, ugliness, we don't end up with the normal thing that we would expect to have because there's two groups and they may have different pieces that happen. Um, and when we look at a few other things, um, like when we look at um, regression, you know, the standard the degrees of freedom is n minus 2 because there's two columns of data that we have to choose from. And then there's a couple others where we multiply them. But we're really doing n minus 1 and n minus 1, and we're multiplying them. You know, so it kind of is all almost, it's almost always n minus 1. Um, like I said, except for a few key exceptions, or they play around with the things because degrees of freedom have, you know, options like in matrices and stuff like that. So, um, but n minus one is going to be the thing that we care about. We usually just, it's real simple. We just take one away from how many sam our sample size. Um, 
and that's going to be your degrees of freedom. Um, what is x? What is x bar? You should know those by now. Here's where we have to put in the distribution, and you can tell it's a t distribution because there's another drop down menu, like this one does. And so when we put it in, we put in a t, and we have to put it in as, as a subscript. I don't know why they care, but they care. Um, is it going to be z or t with degrees of freedom in the subscript? So to get to the subscript, it's functions and the first one here. And you put an 8. Because if you don't do that, So that's how you get it right. If you don't do it, and you would just put T8 and hit enter. It marks it wrong. So you have to use the subscript. And like I said, it's in functions. And it's the first one. I mean, technically, I guess you could use this one, but you have full sub n super and script and subscript, but this is just easier. Um, so make sure you hit this and then put in the degrees of freedom. And so you're going to have to do that every time we do a T distribution. And the reason you use a T distribution is because we don't know the population's innovation. That's it. That's, that's everything. That's everything you need to know. Um, because the sample standard deviation is known. And the sample size is small. Well, technically, we always use it now. Um, it doesn't matter how big the sample size is. Um, like as I was telling, as I was saying at the beginning, of, eventually the, the t distribution becomes the normal distribution as the sample size gets huge. Um, but because it's a calculator with a number with computers, we can just do it. And yes, they'll eventually be the same and overlap. But just just do the t distribution, and you'll get. The right answers. So again, to do it, we're going to go to stats and we're going to tests. And because this is a t distribution, we're going to use the t interval. So instead of seven, we're going to use eight. And because we have data, we're going to put make sure data is selected. Our lists are in list one. We don't have anything in list two, so we're just clearing that out. And put in the number one. So everything is because it won't work if you leave that blank. So you just have to put a frequency of one. And then what is our confidence level? Uh, they want 95. So 0.95. And it gives me my numbers. So it also gives me the mean and standard deviation. So if I didn't really want to wait, if I didn't want to do the one variable statistics, I could put it in once I get that, because it's going to give me my mean and my standard deviation and my sample size. So it gives me these three things, as well as the confidence level. And again, everything else is the same. Put these numbers here and here. This is our confidence level. This is whatever's left divided by 2. So because it's 5%, you have to divide 5 by 2. I remember 5% is 0 0.05 divided by 2. That's where that comes from. So don't put it in as 95 and then two and a half and two and a half. That doesn't work. It needs to be in decimals because it has to be less than a one. So, um, and then again, the error bound is just take these two things, subtract them, and then divide by two. I get that. Or you could take like the mean and subtract it off of that. That would work as well. Um, so either one of those things is how you do it. Like there's a couple of ways to do it. I just find this is easier because while it's more steps, I have the numbers right there in front of me. So I don't have to go back and look for the mean. Um, I'm lazy. I realize there's more steps, but I'm still lazy. And then what does confidence level mean? So again, just explaining what confidence level is. I'm going to 
skip number five for a second and then come down here to number six. Um, so this is the other confidence level that we have. So we have Z interval, T interval, and one proportion Z interval. So because this is a proportion, we want to make sure we use proportion in our Z intervals. So there is no T interval. There is no standard deviations. Um, they are going to ask you to calculate uh, the error, the um, standard error, which is annoying, um, but and unnecessary. But whatever. Um, so these values here come from our information. We have 430 people and found that 300 of them always wear their seatbelts. So X is the number of successes. So that's where the 300 comes from. N is the sample size. And this here is P prime is just dividing those. And notice I didn't have to turn it into a decimal. It will take this fraction and be happy with it. So um, we can. the reason we care about this decimal is here and here. So again, we can have the 300 divided by 430 for that one. So that's again we don't have to worry about but this here we have to have we have a formula to calculate so we kind of need this decimal so that's the number we have six nine seven seven four decimal places and the formula to get s of x in this case is the square root of p Q over N. So we need to know what P is. I mean, technically, yes, we could use the fraction. So that's the thing we would be doing, and then take the square root of it. So that's, you can see why it's, e, then remember Q is equal to one minus P. So I just, as a fraction, I just went, oh, I have 430 of them. 430 minus 300 is 130. So I have those fractions. I can turn them into decimals. Um, I could, you know, turn it into, um, leave it like that, which is fine too. So 300 divided by 430 times 130 divided by 430, all divided by 430. Gives me this number. Then I had to take the square root of it. So second square root, second answer, and I get this 0 0.0221, which is what they get here. So I could also do this as a decimal, so I would have had 0.6977 times parentheses 1 minus 0.6977 close parentheses, divided by 430. I get pretty close to the same numbers and then I take the square root of it.
and notice it's off because this is rounding. This is more exact. This was rounded. Um, this was exact, so I'm off. But I'm not off until the one, two, three, four, five, the sixth decimal place, the seventh decimal place. So it's pretty close to being accurate. You know, it's not perfect. It's rounding error. So realistically, you should round afterwards. Um, but you know, the numbers are going to be close enough that uh, they're not going to matter in this case here. But that's how you cal calculate this thing is by doing this stuff. Okay. Once we have that, we are like, oh, we're going to use the normal distribution because it's a portion. We always use the normal distribution. Then to calculate the um, interval, we come down to one proportion Z interval. And notice we don't care about any of those decimals. How many successes were there? How many trials were there? 300 or 30. These numbers have to be whole numbers. You can't put decimals in. Okay. We're going to see that in the next problem. So um, make sure you watch it. And then calculate. And it gives us our ranges. And the reason those numbers are off is because we rounded here. So, but notice it's they're correct. It no, it has those numbers in there from the rounding that it's done. Um, like this was from rounding. This was from doing it with the actual numbers. So the numbers become are off just enough. But it works. Um, it's weird how it has like the actual numbers and the estimated numbers and uses both of them and we'll give you answers for either one. And then uh, if the survey was to be done by telephone, why might things be different? Why might they be bad? Well, people tend to lie or not participate <laughs> on phone surveys. Uh, phone's ringing. It's dinner time. I don't know the phone number. I'm not answering it. All right. People don't have phones. Um, you know, basically, uh, that's th this one here. Uh, people no longer have home phones. They have cell phones. Cell phones are supposed to be on do not call list by default. So um, they might not get called and people lie. Oh, they want to know if I'm wearing a seatbelt. I'll probably get charged if I tell them I don't wear a seatbelt. I wear a seatbelt, even though I don't wear a seatbelt, but I'm not telling them that. So they tend to lie. So those are reasons that things can go wrong. Now I'm going to come back to this one. OK. So when we are guessing how many people we need to ask, we have a general value, and we have the exact things. So. The reason we use the general values is because they're quicker. Okay, so we have this formula that we use. And when we're doing it, they ask us about a 95% confidence level. Well, remember in the empirical form, we said two standard deviations is the 95% confidence level. So instead of this being a Z, we usually use a two. So this comes out to be two squared. times p. And when we don't know p and q, we assume that they're 50%, because that gives us the biggest number that we can use. Very 
And so when we multiply this out here, we get one. Oh, I know where you want to go. Okay. Now, unfortunately, realistically, in, in z squared at 95% is 1.96, so it doesn't come out nicely. Um, <laughs> but this is the estimate. We're off by a little bit by a few people. But it works out much easier to do. Uh, and remember, we, whenever we, whatever values we get in decimals, we round up because we can't add, ask part of a person. So if we have a half a person or a third of a person, we have to ask the whole person. So we get to go through the whole survey. Um, but this is the general formula. Um, the realistic formula is actually. One point nine six squared times point five times point five. Where's like any of our uh, golf stuff? Over uh, E squared. Did we keep your clothes? Oh, you like the ball and stuff. On the ball? Yeah, hold on. Let me just get my shoes on. I'm going golfing tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> well, it's going to be clothes time. Yeah, What time, Alex? I have to take your car in at 7.50. What, honey? I have to take his car in at 7.50, so he might have to take my car. Okay. So we take this thing here, and we're going to plug these pieces in where this is my E. Okay. And again, unless they tell us that 70% of people wear their seatbelts, from previous studies, we always just go with the 0.5. And then we just calculate the values. So second square root, 1.96 squared times 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 0.03 squared. Oops, no square root, my bad. I thought something was wrong. That's fine. That, that was my bad. I, the no square root. Okay, 1.96 times 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 0.03. Oh, I forgot to square that. That's better. And so we get this 1067.11111, which means we have to round up by one value. And so this is how what we do for all those things. And like I said, but realistically, the easiest, that instead of having to do this math, we just use this. We get the 1 over e squared. Um, and so for whatever value, and it's valid for everything. So if we want to be, uh, you know, uh, 0.03, it's 1 divided by 0.03 squared. And notice we're off by 50 people. Not bad. Uh, the reason we usually do 3% is because if we were to do smaller numbers, like 2%, we now have to do 2,500 people. So we've almost doubled. And if we want to be off by 1%, we have to ask 10,000 people. So we're 10 times, we have to ask 10 times as many people. Uh, to be 1% error than we did for 3% error. So um, that's why 3% is a common size for errors when we're doing proportions. 
uh, because it's fewer people. It's cheaper. So that's how that works. Um, this one here, I'm going to show you, like, it's just one. I'm going to show you one of them. But the same things happen. So when we do this, we have to get whole numbers. So we have um, ask about interracial marriage. And we ask 1,700 people and 11 people. Some were Latino, some were Black, some were Asian, some were white. And all we're interested in is just the people who are Asian. So there are 255 people who are Asian. And we found that 79% of them thought this was a good thing. So when we're doing our stats, our z-interval, one portion z-interval, the x value is 0 0.79 times 255, which is 201.45. Now, we can't have that. It doesn't have, it's not a whole number, so we have to round, and we can round in either direction. Should round down because this is 201, and then 255, and we are 95% confident and we get our numbers. So can you show me, this. can you show me, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to do it at yeah. the same time. Um, no, I'm, so I went to test and then you went down where? I'm not sure. Okay, where. so we went to stat, yes. test, oops, one variable, one proportion Z interval. All the way so number A. Okay. Okay, we had to find out, you know, what percent this is how many people were yes so what percent of this so i if i multiply them oops, it helps to have the thing click 0. 0.79 times 255 we get that so i went around to 202 and so neither one of those gives the right the answers that they're looking for because somehow they're, they're doing it with by hand and using the calculations, because of this asks for, um, this needs to have these things to be whole numbers, the error is gonna be off just a little bit. So um, 0.74235 and 0.84196, and I hit enter. And those were fine. It also was fine with the other one which is kind of weird, uh, stat, tests, one proportion Z interval, and this is 201. I get 0. 0.73809 and 0. 0.83838. And it's fine with either one of those. So you can round up or you can round down um, and they're both gonna give you correct answers, uh, which are not the answers that the computer is looking for um, because of the fact that like they're, they're using a different method of calculating it than the calculator, which is how they teach you how to do it, which is so it's kind of weird um, because they, their fun function can actually use the uh, decimal value, whereas uh, the calculators cannot, so. Um, just round it either up or down and then go on. Because if you didn't do that, it would give you an error of domain because it does it can't work with a partial answer. It, That's what I thought. Have, so, so then you just round in, in one way or the other. That's all. So make sure you, you round that value. So stat, tests. It doesn't like this as a decimal. Round it up, round it down, whichever one makes you happy. Like you should round it in the order that it's supposed to. Um, like you can round that down because it was 201.4. 
so you could round it down. Um, you should round it down, but it's going to give us um, either one. It's going to be happy with either answer in those. Mm -hmm. cases. And so you're doing that for all three of these. And then you're going to see that there's overlap. And you look to see, well, where are the overlaps? Well, white and Latinos overlapped and Latinos and blacks overlapped. Um, so that tells us that while those two may shift, or Latino may technically realistically in uh, the real standard, the real uh, proportion may be higher than whites or lower than blacks, the real proportion of whites is higher than the real proportion of blacks. That's all that means. <laughs> I think the question is awful and I don't like reading it, so I'm just going to skip it. I'm not going to read it, I'm, but I'm going to give you the explanation of what that means. Um, because there's no overlap in those, then, you know, A is, is because A and C don't overlap, A is higher than C. Whereas B and A and B overlap, so B could technically have a higher um, population proportion than B, than A. And because B and C overlap, C could technically have a higher uh, population proportion than B. So A could be above or below, like they could change those orders. Uh, B could either be at the top or at the bottom, um, but A and C will never change places. Like A will always be above C. And then here, um, what they're asking is, uh, they tell you that 80% of you know students or 80% of adults do this thing, what is the point estimate? Well, the point estimate is that number there, the 80%. That, that's what we use to calculate. That's what the point estimate is. The point estimate is the sample mean or the sample proportion. So that's just all that. Is. And we use that value to add and subtract and get our errors. So that's what that is from. Um, and I think that is everything. Like I said, you have a couple that you have to do on your own. but they're just giving you some practice. So these, this here is going to have a few uh, Z uh, proportion Z intervals. And this one here is going to give you, number, problem number two is going to give you another Z interval with means. But you don't have any other T intervals. I don't know. Um, it seems silly to me that they don't, they only gave you a, so many of these, but I would just practice a couple of them so you know, you know how to plug them in. Um, so when you're doing them, oops, we're going to go to stat, tests, and it's either going to be number seven, eight, or A. Seven is if we know the population standard deviation with means. Eight is if we don't know the population standard deviation with means. And A is if it's a proportion. That's it. That, that, those are the, the, the things you have to look at. And the same thing is going to happen next week, or I keep saying next week, but Thursday, when we do tests, we're going to have a Z test, which means we're going to do a hypothesis test where we know the population standard deviation. We're going to do a T test when we don't know the population standard deviation and we have a mean. And then we're going to do a one proportion Z test when we have a single proportion. So those three things are going to follow the same rules as the intervals. So, and again, just remind, reminder because that way I, I don't mess people up. Um, the test is not due until um, the 30th. And if you look here, see, I changed the date. And now it says that it's due right here, June 30th at midnight. So um, that's been changed. So you two people will know because you were here and you got it firsthand. Everybody else will probably like panic on Friday, on Monday, on Sunday, and then realize they didn't have to um, because um, they weren't paying attention and they weren't here. So. Um, are there any I did put the grades in, um, and I gave everybody two tenths of a point because there were two people who got 24.8. So I just raised them up to 25, and then I gave uh, two tenths of a point to everybody else um, who took it. Um, I think everybody here took it. So uh, 
if not and you need uh, somebody i know there's one student who needed an extension he's like i've forgotten so um, i don't think that was either of you two though correct no okay um so like uh i just gave them an extension somebody asked me like oh i forgot to turn it in so i gave them an extension until the end of the day today um and so that's kind of everything that was with that um you know, I don't particularly like giving extensions on the test because, like, you know, then, like, again, everything gets bottlenecked for the rest of the stuff. But, like, they would just, oh, I forgot to submit. So I'm like, all right, well, I guess I, I felt like I thought I hit it. And I'm like, well, all right. Um, so I think that is everything I have to share with you. To, uh, Thursday, I will see you guys again at uh, 6. Um, we'll talk about hypothesis testing. And we're going to reuse this stuff that we just did today. So... Um, the stuff we do today is used to test, to check uh, hypothesis tests. Um, so, and then the second test is on chapters six, seven, and eight. So uh, the two things about uh, the um, normal distribution and this. So um, this is what the, the test is on. So if you feel comfortable, feel free to start. Um, and then, but, but like I said, it's not due until uh, here but we have everything done. Um, we've covered everything that, that we were talking about. Um, so that's good. Go through, make sure you you're, you feel comfortable, do the stuff again and again and again. Remember, if you have questions, click on the book and then it'll bring you to it and then go, oh, that's what that was. You know, so make sure you're, you're looking at all the pieces uh, that you have. Um, other than then, the week after, we're all out for uh, 4th of July. So um, I will see you guys next week on Tuesday, and then not until after the week of the 4th of July um, on the 12th. So, and then we're we're getting close to done. We have, you know, three chapters left and two tests. So, like, we're halfway there. <laughs> so, um, so just keep plugging away, keep working at it. Uh, make sure you uh got everything and if you have questions you know feel free to send me a, an email let me just make sure i have no messages i had one yesterday but i think i answered it so i have it, a it was question a, yes can you just remind us i know you said that if your grade is high enough you don't have to do the um final or the final. Uh, project or whatever yeah. it is yes um can you what what is it uh what what just what like is the, the final pro the final yeah. project yeah. So if you go to weekly work in Blackboard and you scroll down to the bottom where it says final project, <laughs> um, we've already done the first part. We've already covered everything that's in the, that's in three parts. Um, here's the project itself. So the first part is getting samples, doing um, uh, summary of dis summary district. Uh, um, descriptive statistics, so mean, median, mode, standard deviation, range, box plots. Um, I ask for a histogram. I ask for a, um, a stem and leaf plot. You probably don't bother doing that one, especially uh, if you're doing, um, you're going to pick two columns of data um, from a list of countries, and then, you know, you get to choose whichever ones you want, whichever column you want, then you do sampling to explain to me how you did the sampling. So that's the first part. The next part is uh, uh, chapter 10. So when we get to chapter 10, um, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, in a couple of days, that's the second part where you're going to do a hypothesis test determining whether uh, high income companies are different from low income companies in one of those two columns of data that you, you did. And then the third part, is you're going to do regression, which is chapter 12. So we are, we, you've already done enough stuff to do the first part of the test. Um, if you have a B, really, that's all I'm looking for is just the first part anyway. If you have a C, then I'll ask you to do the first and second parts. If you have a D, then or and then you do the first, all three, the whole thing. Uh, but if you have an A, I'm not going to ask you to do it because you've shown that you know how to do this stuff. So, um, but if you're like, oh, gee, I think I'm, I'm not doing well. Just start working on it. Get the first part done and out of the way. 
because it's the most work. Um, it, it's the longest part, uh, and it can't hurt you, you know, to, to, to sample. Here's the data right here. It's in a spreadsheet. So you can go through and however you wish to determine, um, you know, that your data. So you're like, oh, I'm going to look at uh, average temperature and energy. And then you're going to sample 60 of them. However you decide to pick out 60 is up to you. Because there's like 100 and there's 233 uh, country groups. Um, some of them say uh, small island developing states. There's some, I believe I have middle income is still in here. Um, low income. Yeah, I still have low income, high income. So obviously those, if you pull those, don't do them because they only have um, uh, population. I think like they they were just from other things. So I just pulled this data from somewhere on the internet, which I can no longer find. <laughs> and you know to, to see if they've updated it. Can't find it anywhere. I don't even remember where I found this because I found this years ago, um, and I thought it was interesting. But um, obviously it's old because it says 2011, 2012. So, and then this is from 2007 and 2008. So I don't even, I think this is from 2014 that I did this, that I found this data. So um, I can't find it again. I don't know where it was. And I'm, I look for it every once in a while to see if I can update the things and change stuff. Um, but I have not been able to come across it. So. Um, but there's like 200 and something countries that you can just pull, you know, you need to pull 60. And however you decide to do that is up to you. Um, I wouldn't do these bottom ones here because obviously there you don't have income listed. So it's hard to determine whether they're low income or high income. Um, I'm looking at them. I think most of them are low income except for possibly South Africa and Yemen um, and the United States. <laughs> so uh but that's yeah so i don't know how i ever missed you know changing pulling these information down so um i do need to update it i just like i said have not found it uh to update it so um but that's where the final project is it's open and for everybody to to work on if you wish to so all right does that, does that answer and overwhelm you <laughs> Yes. <laughs> You're welcome, Janelle. So, yeah, I mean, I like I said, I would just do the, like Michelle. I do the first part just to get it done, and then you're like, oh, I don't have to do anymore, or I don't have to do it all, and just walk away from it. But you can, like, you're like, oh, you you know how to do the first part. You've seen all the stuff already, like the first in the first two lessons you've seen all of it that first section you've talked about you know sampling and there's all the different types of sampling that you can do um you're like oh i'm going to do a convenient sample and i'm just going to or uh, a systematic sample and i'm going to take every third person until i get to 60 done that's fine I'm, I'm fine with it but if you can say this is how i did it and i'm not going to say no that was wrong if you decide to do a random sample and pull one that's fine too if you're like oh i looked and said I'm going to, you know, pick out ones that are um, countries that I want to go to or um, I did, um, you know, I, I was interested in uh, emissions and I only picked countries that had emissions. Yeah, that, that makes sense. You know, like I found most of them didn't. So I, I only picked the 60, the first 60 that had them. That's fine. You know, but you just have to explain this is how I did this. This is how I did my sampling. And I'm okay with that. As long, as long as you know which group it was and whether there would be bias in, from, from doing that or not, and, you know, you can explain that, that, that's all that needs to be done for that thing. And then, you know, find the mean, median mode, standard deviations, range, you know, all that stuff. Okay? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. All right, sounds good. Like I said, and if you've got an A, you don't have to do it. So. Um, but it, like I said, it doesn't hurt to have it in your pocket as we're going along and going, oh, okay, because when we get to, um, here after chapter 10, you can do part two. And then when we get to chapter 12, 
you can do part three. So technically you could be done the final, you know, two weeks before the final is due. You know, I mean, like it's like you're ready to take the final here. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you, then it's just up to you to decide as a, and not, not do until here. So, um, but like if you're like, oh, gee, I think I'm going to need it, then I would just start working on it and getting it out of the way. So um, that's all I have to, to say. So I'm going to stop sharing. Have a great night. Um, and I'm going to turn the recording off.